Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro, where for 15 minutes, Rita shines a light on financial experts who help us all flex our financial muscle. Today, our guest certainly fits the bill. Akiva Ellis is an MSFP, CPA slash PFS slash CPA slash CHSNC. I don't know what those initials mean, some of them maybe. But Yakiva's going to fill us in on all of it. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show on the Incandescent Radio Network. And I'm going to throw it over to Rita to introduce this amazing woman. Well, thank you so much, Hope. So Akiva is truly a superstar. Most importantly, she's my friend and a fellow CFP board ambassador. Akiva is a financial planner and educator, a proud daughter of England. She is the co-founder of The Bemused. Together with her husband, she promotes inclusive financial literacy for young adults through YouTube video content, an online program, and speaking on personal finance and topics of the spirit. She also serves, as I mentioned, as a CFP board ambassador, has been quoted in various media outlets, including the Boston Globe, Business Insider, RIA Intel, and CNBC. She has been a featured guest on Pastor TV and numerous podcasts. When I say she's a superstar, she is a superstar. In 2021, he was recognized by Think Advisor as a luminary of diversity and inclusion. She was also recognized by Financial Planner Magazine as an industry rising star and was named to Investor News Class of 40 Under 40, the youngest person to grace this list. So without further ado, welcome Akiva. Thank you so much, Rita. I'm so excited to be here and to have this conversation with you. It really just feels like catching up with an old friend. So I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for the invitation. You're most welcome. So of course, we are going to learn everything about the bemused. But before we get to that, that, I think it's important to set the stage and talk about your financial education journey as a young adult. Yes. So my education journey was really one that was self-imposed and self-motivated. So I like to say in, in a nutshell, my light bulb moment around money and my drive and motivation to teach myself more about money came from the fact that I grew up in a household, as mentioned, I come from an immigrant household where we did not talk about money at all, right? So I grew up pretty smart kid. I consider myself always had good grades, was always pretty smart from that perspective. But then I got to that life stage where I was transitioning between high school and college, you know, kind of getting out into the real world and realizing how much I really did not know about money as I was faced with, you know, doing the FAFSA for the first time and just coming through these, these first time life events as a young adult that I simply did not know how to handle. And so that was really my drive for learning more about money and educating myself. So in, in true Gen Z fashion, I took to Google. That was my starting point. And I really started teaching myself really anything I could find around personal finance, around money, teaching myself. And that's how I somehow came across the field of financial planning, like learning that was even a career I could do, a thing I could do to help other people with their money. And the rest is really history. So that has really been my journey is learning and then also teaching what I'm learning to others as the opportunities present themselves. Well, thank you for that. And I know you are so accomplished. If you wouldn't mind sharing with our audience, I know this is an extra question, but hopefully you're okay with it, about all the letters and important designations after your name, because I want everyone to know how accomplished you are. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, so I'll share really briefly. So the, the first kind of set of set of letters is my master's in financial planning. So it's pr pretty straightforward. That's why I ended up going to um, do my master's after my bachelor's degree so I can get more specified and niche knowledge within financial planning, uh, because I didn't have that opportunity, you know, in undergrad, I just was a general, you know, business major studying finance, studying accounting, but nothing as specific as financial planning. So that was kind of my first step along my educational journey formally. And then I decided to go for my CPA. So I do have an accounting undergrad, as I mentioned. And so I just decided it made sense, right, uh, to do the CPA, sit for the exams and financial planning being a subsection really of the accounting profession. It seemed like a natural fit for me at that time. Uh, the PFS, personal financial specialist, is actually a sub designation of the CPA. Uh, so many people don't know, but as a CPA, you can have subspecialty designations um, attached to your, your CPA. And so uh, given that I was already kind of full into the financial planning space, uh, that uh, I decided to go through that path as well. Then, of course, it's a CFP, Certified Financial Planner. Of course, Rita's a CFP. I'm a CFP. That one's pretty popular, as we know it, in this, in this industry, Certified Financial Planner. 
Um, and of course, as was mentioned, has gone on to be an ambassador of the designation. So I must love it and support it <laughs> enough to do that. Um, and then lastly, the Chartered Special Needs Consultant, the CHSNC. That was my most recent designation that I completed through the American College of Financial Services, specifically learning about how to better cater towards individuals and families who have to deal with special needs issues. Thank you for that. So what are some common myths you hear about building wealth? I mean, I know one that I hear is like, well, I don't have enough wealth to do financial planning. I'm like, no, actually, you do need to do financial planning to have wealth. So that's one that I hear. But I'd love for you to share mm -hmm. some of the myths that you hear. Yes. Yeah, so I think that is definitely one of them, right? So you need a whole ton of money to do this whole wealth building thing. And that could not be further from the truth. In fact, one of the things that I that I do in a presentation that I share regularly is really my and my husband's journey to building our net worth, you know, increasing our net worth by six figures without six figure salaries in the span of just a couple of years, right? And so there are strategies or things that can be done to help move your net worth in, a, in the positive direction without you having to make a lot of money or have a lot of money already existing in your family uh, system. So that's definitely one major myth I hear all the time that I like to, to debunk off the bat. Of course, it means that more money is further leverage to turbocharge your wealth building goals, but it's definitely not a necessary prerequisite. So I'm glad you brought that up because that is definitely one major myth that I wanted to bring up as well. Uh, the second major thing that I spend a lot of time debunking is people think that there is really one silver bullet to building wealth from a lot of conversations that I have, especially with those who are kind of in my generation around my age, right? They're, they're really excited to hear about the latest, you know, stock tip or what's going on in the crypto markets. Like, is this my golden ticket to wealth and to financial freedom? And it's like, wait, wait, wait. Like, no, especially when it comes to investing. I hear that so often. Um, and, and my message really has always been, let's not put the cart before the horse, right? Yes, investing is important. It's a necessary part of the wealth building equation for many people, but there are other equally as important, arguably, if not more important things that you should also be focusing on um, when it comes to building wealth holistically and also protecting the wealth that you're trying to build. So that's a, a second major myth or misconception, a conversation that I have very often, like I said, especially uh, with younger people. So there's no one silver bullet, no one thing you can do to help to build wealth. It really is a combination of different factors um, that you really have to pay attention to. I love it. What are some of the money topics you think, based on your experience and expertise, young adults should learn? Yeah, that's a natural lead in, I guess, to what I was just saying. Um, so I actually have a framework. It's called the Musical Method for Financial Success. And it really encompasses the things that I think, especially younger adults, just who I tend to work with, um, can really and really should pay attention to in order to help to improve their financial well being and build wealth. So I'll run you through the framework really quickly. So the M in the musical framework stands for money mindset. I think it's one of the most underrated parts of this entire financial picture, right? As I like to say, I can talk to you about budgeting so you're blue in the face, but if we do not first address the money mindset pieces, understanding what are the money messages that you've learned either intentionally or unintentionally due to your upbringing, your environment, your surroundings, et cetera, and how those messages could either be hurting or helping you with your finances, um, you know, how you view money as an individual, all of those things play a massive, massive, massive role in your future financial success. If we can't get over those mental hurdles, it's gonna be a really hard uphill battle when it comes to building wealth. So first and foremost, we need to have that conversation. So what is your money personality? What are the things that you are, are hearing, seeing, feeling about money, about wealth? that we need to address. So that's that's the M. First and foremost, we start there. Um, and then the U in the musical framework is then understanding your cash flows, right? So now that we've had the money mindset conversation, now we can start to talk about things like budgeting and understanding where your money is going and where you want it to go in the future, right? Because those two things are definitely not always the same. Uh, so we can get a really good grip on what's coming in, what's going out of your financial system. It's gonna be really important on your, your journey and finding that room within your budget uh, for other important wealth building activities that come later on uh, down the line. That also includes understanding taxes, especially if you're here, here in the US. I feel like taxes are one of the most misunderstood things in general American society. 
And so I think it's also understanding how, you know, to keep most of the money that comes through your system, right? Taxes is a big part of that conversation. And something that I, I always find is a light bulb moment for people when I teach about that or talk about that, or when someone finally understands how taxes actually work, like it makes so much more sense to them and it really helps to further the conversation. So that is the U in the framework is understanding cash inflows and outflows. And then the S in the musical framework is securing your foundation. So again, as we're building wealth, we wanna make sure that we are protecting what we're building and we're laying that foundation and, and, and framework. So the, the boring quote unquote, steps of, you know, what does it look like to save, like for an emergency fund, right? All of these fundamental pieces that are a big part of the picture, right? Explaining to people that we can't just put it all in the markets, right? We have to have some cash available for rainy day, or for other short-term goals that you might have for your finances. So what are some strategies that we can do to do that successfully? How do we manage debt successfully, right? And it doesn't necessarily always mean getting out of debt 100%, which is sort of a misconception that I also hear is that, you know, debt freedom is the pinnacle of financial freedom. That isn't always the case, right? Sometimes there are wiser things that you could be doing with your money rather than putting it all, uh, you know, towards your debt 100%, every last dollar and penny. Um, so how do we manage debt wisely and, and make sure that we have it where it's to an to a amount that is reasonable and that you have a path that is reasonable um, for lowering your debt over time? And then also insurance, right? It's another big part of the protection conversation, right? Especially for us young adults, especially those who become, you know, turn to magical age 26 and then find themselves without insurance if they've been covered by a parent or something like that for all these years. And you have a lot of people walking around uninsured, right? And so it's it's those questions of, okay, let's start to think about, okay, what what would you do if you had a health emergency or any type of other emergency, you know, your apartment catches fire. Like, do we have renters insurance in place? Do we have homeowners insurance in place? Do we have health insurance? Like all these things that we can help to protect so that we can, what I call end GoFundMe culture. Um, Cause it's really sad for me to witness when, you know, tragic events happen, things that not are necessarily avoidable, but things that we could have helped to protect against. And then we find ourselves in situations that, you know, nobody really likes having to go to people to ask for money and ask for help. Um, so what are the ways that we could uh, we can help to lessen that burden um, for, for yourself and for your family? Uh, so insurance is a really big part of the, the picture there. So I'm halfway through the framework now. I don't know if you want to like stop me because I've been talking for a while, um, but there are three more parts to the framework that I want to cover oh, as well. You. It's, it's okay. so true, Akiva, you can continue. I just want to say one thing. I didn't want to interrupt your flow, but insurance is really important. Even if people believe they are the healthiest, invincible people on planet Earth, Someone shared this with me when I was giving a presentation to the Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers. She said to me, she's like, Lisa, I'm really glad you talked about insurance because I was attending school in Houston when Harvey died. And my apartment flooded. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that I had renter's insurance. Yeah. So, please continue. We got exactly. I. Yes, so that was the S. So the I is investing. So like I said, investing is an important part of the picture. It's not necessarily the first, but it is an important part of the financial picture and wealth building process. So we do want to talk about investing, we want to make sure that we understand what we're doing when we're investing, what are the types of investments that are out there and available, what are some ways to make this process painless, as painless as possible, if that is what you desire, right? I'm the type of person where, you know, as much experience as I have in the financial industry to this point, investing is honestly not one of my favorite things to do and deal with. Like I love to have my investing be as easy and as passive as possible. And so what are some ways I can kind of just get the basics and get you understanding the ways in which investing can work for you, you know, taking advantage of any retirement spot, you know, employer sponsored retirement plans and other types of uh, investment accounts that you may not have uh, heard of or, or have exposure to. So investing, definitely a big component of the picture for long-term wealth building. And the C then is credit building because in this country, credit is just one of those things that you just have to have, right? So understanding how it actually works, working against a lot of the things and the myths you might've heard about credit over the years, how it actually works to build a credit score, the difference between a credit score and a credit report, how you review that, how you manage disputes, all of that stuff. Uh, making sure that you manage your credit history because at some point in most adult lives, we will need to leverage our credit at some point or another. And so making sure that that is as strong as possible so that you're well-primed and positioned to do that 
when the opportunity arises. Um, and then the A and the L are, are one and the same. It, I call it adulthood's life stages. So this is really where everything kind of culminates into managing many of the life events that we go through as young adults. So how does it work logistically when you're looking to buy a home, right? What are the steps involved? What are the people involved? Understanding these processes so that you don't step into a lot of the common potholes and pitfalls that maybe many of us experience, you know, going through these stages at one point in, in time. So if you can learn from the lessons from people who've gone through this before you, the easier it will be, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, renting your first apartment, buying your first car, should I buy, should I lease? What if I want to start a business? Like, what should I know about that? Or things I should start thinking about all of these different life stages, getting married or, you know, combining with a life partner, combining finances, all of those conversations are really the, the big pivotal moments that I feel can really make or break your wealth building progress, that mistakes can be really critical in, in some of these life stages and life decisions. Um, and so being able to navigate those uh, life events with ease, I think is a big part of the picture as well. So that's my, my musical framework, the things that I tell people to focus on um, that really matter when it comes to building wealth. I love it. I love the musical framework. So as we wind down, I, I would be remiss if I did not give you the opportunity to talk about the, the muse, how we can learn more and how we can follow you and support your work. Yes, absolutely. So the Bemuse, again, is a financial education brand specifically targeted towards young adults, right? People who are kind of older Gen Zs, younger millennials um, that I run with my husband. It's a lot of fun. We do it together. We do lots of different things, just all related to the goal of helping young adults with their money. So if you're looking for free educational slash personal content, we share a lot of our personal lives on, on, online as well. Our personal financial situation, we do quarterly network updates, all of that stuff. Um, on YouTube. So if you're looking for uh, free content that you can point people in the direction of, YouTube is our home base. So you can find us at The Bemuse, um, backslash The Bemuse. Anyway, you type in The Bemuse, you'll find us on YouTube. And then if you want to check out our website, it is thebemusetv.com. And there you'll find more information regarding our paid programs and other ways that um, you can work with us. Our flagship program actually is a step-by-step hand-holding through the musical framework. So if you have a young adult in your life who could benefit from something like that, getting that support, uh, you know, group coaching calls with me, et cetera, you can find out more about that on our website as well. Well, that is fantastic, Eva. Thank you so much for being here. Now back to you, Hope. Wow, thank you. Uh, you know, cheers to Gen Z, woman. Oh, that is so cool. You're fantastic. I love this, uh, this next generation of female entrepreneurs. It's so powerful and so wise. I was sharing with Rita earlier that I was at a, a luncheon for women yesterday and um, the publisher of the, the, the event was saying, you know, he was sort of shocked that women were so powerful. You know, we could hear it in his voice. And I just thought we have to stop having that conversation. This is the conversation we should be having. So cheers to Rita for bringing you on the show and Akiva, only, only the best to you. We look forward to promoting you and the future and to keeping up with all your amazing musical success. <laughs> so thank you all for yeah. listening. Yeah. Yeah. Happy holidays. Uh, we're rounding, uh, ending the year in a couple of weeks. And we just thank everyone for watching Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show, and we will see you all soon. Thank you so much for being part of our Incandescent Radio and TV family. This is Hope Katz Gibbs, founder of Incandescent Incorporated, the PR and publishing company for women entrepreneurs. Our Incandescent Radio and TV shows are brought to you by our advertisers and clients. Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro, brings us 15 minutes of tips every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live, where you'll meet experts who are helping us flex our financial muscles. Find all of the episodes at margaritachang.com. You'll also meet intuitive psychotherapist Kara Keem, who interviews therapists and other intuitive guides from around the world. Learn more at karakeem.com. And you're going to love social justice expert Karen Hanrahan, CEO of the San Francisco-based Glide Memorial Foundation. She bridges the gap from local impact to global change on her thought leadership show on Incandescent Radio. Learn more about Karen at KarenHanrahan.com. You're also going to love Alina Liao, founder of the radical wellness journaling company, ZenitJournals.com. 
Alina asks, have you tried to journal but found it hard to keep up? Then it makes it easier to journal for your wellness. With Zenit, you can customize your journal with prompts that speak to you. No more blank pages. Your Zenit is your personalized space to take care of yourself. Website, ZenitJournals.com. Feel it, write it, send it. You'll also meet amazing Tracy Schott, founder of Voices for Change. Tracy is determined to change the world and end domestic violence. Learn more at VoicesForChange.net. And we are so thrilled to be publishing a book for Angela Mitchell, who is the tech expert of case management. And she's also the founder of this fabulous organization, Kids Code 2. She is determined to teach kids to code computers. Talk about teaching a kid to fish. We invite you to discover and peruse all the Incandescent Incorporated websites, the magazine for women, by women, about women, incandescentwomen.com. Our health and wellness magazine is beincandescent.com, the business of mind, body, spirit, soul, and heart. Our YouTube channel is incandescent.tv. And you can learn about our PR and book publishing services at incandescent.us. If you'd like to have your own radio and video show, check us out at incandescentradio.com, where you can see what we can do for you. These podcasts are also featured on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Our podcasts are produced by Brandy Wilsker. Our videos are produced by Nelson Benitez. Our website developer is Max Kukoy, and our incandescent illustrator and designer is Michael Glenn Williams. If you'd like to learn more, please send me an email, hope at hopegibbs.com. Here is to your incredible, indelible, incandescent success. Much love and many.